Welcome to Reading Rashi Made Easy. Shmeezy. Our goal here is actually to have the child convince himself, slash herself, slash as in grammar, not in violence. You have to be careful nowadays. We want the child to convince themselves that reading Rashi is really easy. And not in an artificial way, but an absolutely realistic way. How are we going to achieve that? So there's a second goal that once they see that it's as easy, we want to remove the obstacles that make it hard. So let's figure out how this really works. There are two components in all the learning process. Number one, you can argue, is technical mastery. Technical mastery of Surus Isis, Nikudais, identifying the beginning sound of every single letter and all the vowels, and then when you combine them, blend them, you can accurately read that. That's all on the side of technical mastery. Building vocabulary, reading accuracy and fluency, translation, knowing the shimushim prefix suffixes, uh, learning tariq mitzvahs. Learning information is technical mastery. There's a second component, we've mentioned this a few times before, and that is the emotional relationship the child has to learning. So, component number one, technical mastery. Component number two was my emotional relationship. Of the two, which will determine the child's motivation? Perseverance, enjoyment of the learning. Will it be technical mastery alone? Or will it be the enjoyment, the relationship that the child has towards the learning? Ultimately, a long-term learner, not necessarily learning all one's life in curl per se, but a long-term learner who's in love with learning, Torah, will learn all his life, will be kavitim, will set aside times to learn Torah all their life. Why? Because they have to, or because they want to, or more, they love to. So these are the two components, and in order for the pain that might be associated to not mastering the information, we want to remove any obstacle that is in the way of a child's loving learning. Any obstacle that is going to has for shalom, help a child not be able to master this and find it difficult and thereby start saying in their mind, I do want to know this, but it's not easy. I really want to know this, but it's hard. I really want to know this because most of the kids seem to be getting it, and I don't, but it's so hard. And eventually, if he doesn't have a breakthrough, those messages internally switch from it's hard to I don't like this. It's hard to I hate this. And then eventually, has for shalom, be me eyes, give up and not even try. Because every time I try, fail, try, fail, try, fail, the emotional association to trying is failure. And if I'm going to fail by trying, the best thing I can do is not even attempt. So ask yourselves, if a child finds the reading of the letters of Rashi's script difficult, challenging, hard, or doesn't enjoy because they don't have the technical mastery, what's going to happen is that their resistance to learning it will increase and eventually it will go from the plus side of the scale with the messages, I want to learn Rashi script, I really need to. The kids are now learning inside actual Rashi and I still can't follow the words. They, they, it's a jungle of, of symbols that I'm not familiar with and therefore it ends up going from, I really want to learn Rashi script to, I don't enjoy this, it's hard, it's difficult, I hate it. And then it goes to the minus side, the scale. And then the child's foot is on the brakes. I don't enjoy this. It's hard. Another foot's on the gas. I really want to, but I can't. And then eventually, if you've got one foot on the gas, one foot on the brakes, how far will the car go? Nowhere. And what will happen to the engine? Burn out real soon. So... That's really a very short Hagdama, a simple introduction to understand that almost in any area of learning, we want to set the kid up for success. 
And in doing so, we want to also remove the obstacles before they would surface, or at least give such a strong internal wiring of, I can, and I know I can because I just did. I can succeed, and I'm not intimidated, I'm not fearful, because I already know so much already. Therefore, when they will hit an obstacle, the determination, the perseverance, the desire to overcome is strong enough to not back off, resist, and fall and say, I can't. That's the psychological dimension, if you want to call it, behind the learning process. Technical mastery, yes, important. But guess what? If I don't take care of removing obstacles that will create resistance, dislike, and then eventually hatred, I'm in danger of not enabling a child who's craving to love learning, dying to love learning, to explore their natural curiosity. So if we don't address how do we avoid those obstacles in the first place, or at the very least build such a love an expectation of success based on reality that I am already successful so that when they hit an obstacle, they are going to engage in perseverance, determination, and the motivation will carry them through the obstacle, above the obstacle, underneath. They'll figure out a way, but the brain will not stop and say, I can't. That's really where we're coming from. So the second part to this introduction, I want to encourage teachers, mowers, rebbies to get the... Rashi book and the DVD that's published by Rabbi Beryl Wine on uh, Destiny Publications, I believe it's called. It's an excellent book for children to be engaged in. It's in cartoon form, but it's really very good, uh, carefully researched. And there's a second book as well, which is also very good from Rabbi Weingarten from Hochma Press. It's called Rashi, Teacher of Israel. It's an excellent biography of the life of Rashi. And it's interesting to note that the Rashi script was not actually the handwriting of Rashi. That particular font existed pre-Rashi, before Rashi, and it suddenly became the most economical font to use when printing was invented because it's a smaller rounded font that's easier than a bit larger square font, so it takes up less room, and it also stands out because it's different. And in that sense, it's easy to identify immediately the main text, Chumash, and the Perush, the explanation, which is Rashi. So I would encourage that in order to endear children to the life of this towering tzaddik, who himself realized there was an enormous need for Klal Yisrael, the Jewish people, to have access to the Talmud. The Gemara, the Talmud, was and still is the meat of our learning. And Rashi saw that at the closing of the Mishnah, within 300 years, the Mishnah was not comprehensible without the Perush of the Gemara. So the Gemara had to be written down. But until then, the Gemara was the oral law of the Mishnah. The Mishnah was the oral law of the Tariq Mitzvahs. We've covered that in building block number two. But understanding that the Gemara alone was an Aramaic language that was spoken in Bavel, the place where the Gemara was written. So the problem came over the next 600 years. During the Tkufa, the period of the Savarayim, and then later the Ga'inim, there were no formal Pirushim, no formal explanations written down because the Gemara was written in the vernacular of that location, Bavel, Iraq. The problem really became in the Tkufa at the end of the Ga'inim, when the Ashkenazi communities had moved as far as France and Germany, eventually to Spain amongst the Sfadim, and further north of Eretz Yisrael, through Turkey and the Arab lands, and eventually into Eastern Europe, Russia, what ended up happening is there became a need to understand the Gemara. And so what Rashi did was he said, you know what, if someone doesn't come up with a perush, an explanation that holds the hand of the Gemara student in the following way. Translate simple words into Hebrew that's more understandable. And number two, hold the hand, so to speak, of the mind of the student, hold his hand through the Gemara, because the logic of the Gemara is not typical. And until you get really used to the unique logic and dialogue of the Gemara style, 
you're going to get lost in the Aramaic and the abbreviated terminology. And so comes along Rashi, and on those two levels, there's much more, but on at least Poshapshat at a simple level, he provides that he'll close the gap where the Gemara is assuming you understand the flow, and he'll close that gap, he'll tell you what's missing, so you stay in the flow of the logic, of the discussion of the Gemara as it unfolds in its parish to the Mishnah. And then number two, obscure words or very unusual Aramaic terminology, he will give you the equivalent in Lashon HaKadosh, in regular Hebrew. So that's where it's really important to understand the foresight that Rashi had in order to maintain the learning of Gemara would not be lost. It's going to be maintained because people have access to the Gemara through his perush. And the proof of how true that was is that you can't find anyone who's going to learn Gemara without Rashi. There were very few individuals who could do that. Rabbi Kiva Eka could figure it out without Rashi and only later on would consult Rashi. But that's extremely unusual. We are totally dependent on Rashi to understand the Gemara. The problem for children is that when they're learning Chumash with Rashi's commentary, or later on Nach, or Gemara with Rashi's commentary, they have to be fluent in Rashi script, the font of Rashi. Fluent means familiar, they can read the words accurately, and they are fluent in reading those words. They're not going to be held back because there are a number of Isis, the letter shapes of Rashi, which are different enough to throw them off. Because if they're going to be held back by Isis, which they don't understand and don't know, they won't be able to read the words. If they can't read the words, they can't reconstruct it. And then what ends up happening is if that goes unnoticed, which it really can often go unnoticed, the child will be forced to compensate with memorization. And if that doesn't work, he'll tune out and start daydreaming and think about other things, Hasva Shalom. So there's a lot at stake over here to ensure that a child understands Rashi. So in our first Hagdama, I just pointed out that there's two aspects to everything when we come to learning. Technical mastery, in this case of Rashi, and our relationship to the learning, in this case, our relationship to learning Rashi. You want them to master the Isis, but you also want them to enjoy it and not feel this is hard. And I'm going to show you how easy this really is. This is Rashi made easy, shmeezy. So actually, it's deceptively simple. I want to encourage you to, as a teacher, realize for yourself, if you were in a child's mind, how easy schmeezy can it really be to read Rashi script if we set up the child for success. How do you do that? Simple. Go through all the ICS. We've done it for you, so you don't have to do it. But go through all the ICS of the regular font go through the equivalent font of each ice in Rashi and identify which ones are completely different, which ones are almost the same. Once you've done that, you're going to come up with the following list, and this is what I'm going to do with you right now. Out of about 32 different ICS, that means I'm, I'm including every Mem Sofit, Nun Sofit, Chaf Sofit, Kaf Sofit, uh, Chaf and Kaf and Pei and Fei. So I'm not taking the 22 Isis, we're expanding it to the, all the end of letters and all the Isis which have a Dagish and also without a Dagish, as with base and Vase and Kaf and Chaf, Pei, Fei, etc. Once, once you expand what the entire gamut of all the Isis are, you've got 32. Out of 32, you're going to see the vast majority are similar or almost the same. And this is how we're going to do it. Let's look at a regular gimel. Here's a regular gimel. Um, children, and you put up on the board the regular gimel and put next to it, this is a Rashi gimel. Could you tell me, um, is the Rashi gimel completely different or almost exactly the same? What's the answer? The surah of the ice, the essential shape of the letter, which I would even have the child trace And recognize that when you trace the letter with your finger, the etzim ice, the basic skeletal definition of that letter, is identical. The font may be a very slight, you know, uh, here's got a little, goes up a little bit, here's more rounded, but those aren't details that are part of the etzim surah, the essential shape of the letter. So here's the exact 
Nusach, the exact wording you want to say, is the Rashi Gimel completely different or almost exactly the same? Those are the exact words. And of course, the child's mind will answer, they're almost exactly the same. Here's a regular Dalad. Here's a Rashi Dalad. Is the Rashi Dalad completely different or almost exactly the same? Even if you have a child to say, well, well Rebbe, um, the Rashi Dalit kind of is a little bit of a diagonal, a little bit of a, a curve, uh, and the regular Dalit comes down straight, so they say, very good. That is a slight difference, but are they completely different or almost exactly the same? You see, you want to keep that Nusach, are they completely different or almost exactly the same? By creating a contrast in those two options, it becomes clear to the brain, because you're directing the brain to pay attention to the fact that they are almost exactly the same. Now, it could be that you'll get some children that will pay attention to the subtle differences, but that's extremely valuable to a teacher because they are revealing what's going through their mind. And if they see it as different and they're paying attention to the differences, you want to help them see where the similarities are still associated to the Etzim Surah. They really are almost equivalent, but if they are still stuck on the slight differences, they may be demonstrating for you that they're not ready to pay attention to the Etzim Surah because you don't want to get distracted by the slight difference. Because right now, see that they're almost exactly the same. I'm saying much, much more words than you would in the actual lesson. This lesson is number one of 11. And in lesson number one, it need not take more than, I would say, three or four minutes max to go through the 23 Isis of regular font of Hebrew that's almost exactly the same as Rashi, and vice versa. Rashi is almost exactly the same as the regular font. And when I say almost exactly the same, I'm referring to the Etzim Surah. And that is something that the child can demonstrate, you can demonstrate, when you trace the actual letter. And let the child, if necessary, trace the letter themselves so that they experience the nerves in their finger touching the surface of the card and making the movement which their brain receives that surah from the movement of the finger and recognizes, oh my gosh, my finger's making the same movement. Clear so far? Let's go to the next letter. Hey, this is a regular hey. Rashi hey, are they completely different or almost exactly the same? Trace it. You can see this curves down a little bit, so there's, there is a slight deviation there, but the essential surah is still there. Let the children grasp this and go straight to the next letter. Regular vav. Rashi Vav. Is the Rashi Vav almost completely different? Or almost exactly the same? Trace the Vav. Oh my gosh, almost exactly the same. Ches. Regular Ches. Rashi Ches. Completely different? Or almost exactly the same? And as you see, you put each one of these, the Gimel, the Dalet, the He, the Vav, the Ches, um, on the wall behind you as the children are facing you, every three letters, three pairs of letters, you're going to say, hmm, who thinks learning Rashi is going to be really hard? Who thinks it's going to be really easy? And of course, what's the child answering in their mind? Well, so far, they almost look exactly the same. This is easy. And that's exactly what you want. You're setting them up for success. You're removing the obstacle of, oh my gosh, a whole new language? What, new font? Oh my gosh, uh, I don't think I'm going to be good at this. I, I, I hope it's easy. I, I don't. And there are some kids who might have been introduced to Rashi elsewhere or have seen Rashi font already inside the Chumash and are already intimidated. You want to remove that obstacle. And this is how you do it. Is Rashi completely different or almost exactly the same? And then every three letters, you ask the simple question, hmm, who thinks Rashi is going to be hard? Who thinks it's going to be really easy? Yud, here's a regular Yud. Rashi Yud, hmm, completely different or almost exactly the same. At this point, the kids might start going, oh, almost exactly the same. That's exactly the point. This is easy. This is so easy. Regular cuff. Rashi cuff. Completely different or almost exactly the same. Regular cuff. Rashi cuff. Completely different or almost exactly the same. Almost exactly the same, Rebbe. Very good. End of half. Rashi, end of half. Oh my gosh, they're almost exactly the same. Who thinks Rashi is going to be really hard? Who thinks it's going to be really easy? Regular Lamed. 
Rashi Lamed. Completely different or almost exactly the same? Trace it. Can you see what I'm doing with my finger? You want the kids, get them to do this too. You want the kids to recognize the Etz and Surah. Regular Mem. Rashi Mem. Completely different or almost exactly the same? Trace it. Almost exactly the same. Regular Nun. Rashi Nun. <laughs> it's kind of getting kind of obvious at this point. This is really easy. Regular end of Nun. Rashi end of Nun. Oh my gosh, almost exactly the same. Ayin. Regular Ayin. Rashi Ayin. Completely different. Or almost exactly the same. So you can see there is a slight difference and some children may find that this is confusing compared to, we'll see later, the tests. But in the meantime, you want them to recognize the etzim surah. The essential shape of the letter is similar or close to the same. Trace it to reinforce that point. You can see how this unfolds. It's very logical and it's scaffolded based on building the child's skill based on reality. It's not artificial. Pay. Regular pay. Rashi pay. Oh my gosh, almost exactly the same. Fei. Regular Fei. Rashi Fei. Almost exactly the same. End of Fei. Regular end of Fei. Rashi end of Fei. Almost exactly the same. Trace it with your finger. Who thinks Rashi is really hard? Who thinks Rashi is going to be easy? If you've shown them the video from Rabbi Beryl Wine, I really recommend you do. There's going to be an endearance, an expectation that they want to know more and they want to learn this font because they already have a deeper appreciation of who Rashi was in history. I think that's a very good way to give a deep impression on a child in preparation for learning about that great personality that they already are somewhat familiar with from the book and from the DVD. Regular Kuf, Rashi Kuf. Completely different or almost exactly the same? Oh, Raish. Regular Raish. Rashi Raish. Completely different or almost exactly the same? Hey, this is easy, schmeezy. Regular tough? Rashi tough. Is this really tough? Yeah, it's really tough. I mean, this is really tough, but it's not hard, it's not tough. Oh, Completely different to almost exactly the same. Saf. Rashi Saf. Oh my gosh, almost exactly the same. Tess. Rashi Tess. Completely different or almost exactly the same. Some children will say, oh wait, there's a little tail sticking out at the bottom of the Rashi Tess. Good. You want them to pay attention. Paying attention is the beginning of awareness. Paying attention to detail is very important. The question we keep pumping here is the etzim surah, the essential shape, completely different or almost exactly the same? That's what you want the kids focusing on. The essential shape is similar, close to same. So watch what happens now. We're really pretty much at the end of the similar shape letters. Regular samach, rashi samach. Completely different or almost exactly the same. So straight away the child will realize the etzim surah is the same. Look how you're circling both the samach and the rashi samach. And you can point out, if they don't, that there's a little tail at the bottom of the rashi samach. And that's fine. You want them to pay attention. Attention is the beginning of awareness. Awareness is the beginning of analysis. Because without awareness, you're not going to pay attention to the differences that you can now contrast or similarities that you can compare. So we're at the point where we're now ready to look at the following. Lesson number two. Welcome to lesson number two. We have isolated the 23 most similar slash same shape letters of Rashi with regular Hebrew font. It shouldn't take as long as I took to explain it uh, because I was elaborating here and there, but really one lesson can take a few minutes. It shouldn't take more than that. And close the lesson right there. The next lesson is very simple. As you recall, the children have learned 303 most frequently reappearing words 
in Chumash Breshis, which also takes care of the vast majority of the rest of the Chumash. The exact number of the ratio is that 303 Shroshim are responsible for giving you approximately 84% of Chumash Breshis. Approximately 65 to 80% of the rest of Chumash and Nevi'im Rishonim. So that's an amazing piece of information for a Rebbe and Murrah to know. Of these 303 Shirashim, 48 of them are two-letter words. Two-letter words are very easy to read because you're only reading the first letter and it's Nakuda and landing on the second letter, which most times doesn't have any Nakuda. Ben, Bas, Av, Aim, Gun, Dug. Very, very easy words and they're all one syllable. So what we've done now is taken all of the two-letter words out of those 48 there are 20 of them, which only have these 23 letters that almost look exactly the same in the Rashi as the regular font. And what we're going to do is have the children read those words. Do a very quick Chazara, lesson number two, quick Chazara, Gimel, the Rashi Gimel, Dalad, Rashi Dalad, Hey, Rashi Hey, and ask them to say it out loud. Vav, Rashi, Vav, good. Regular Ches, Rashi Ches, good. Yud, Rashi Yud, Kaf, Rashi Kaf, Chaf, Rashi Chaf, End of Chaf, End of Chaf, Lamed, Lamed, Mem, Mem, Nun, Rashi Nun, End of Nun, Rashi End of Nun, Ayin, Rashi Ayin, Pei, Rashi Pei, Fei, Rashi Fei, End of Fei, Rashi End of Fei. You do this very quickly, Kuf. Rashi Kuf, Reish, Rashi Reish, Taf, Rashi Taf, Saf, Rashi Saf, Tes, Rashi Tes, Samach, Rashi Samach. If you count that up, I think it was less than a minute. So what ends up happening is you do a quick Chazara, now go into lesson number two, after you did the quick Chazara, and show them the two letter words that contain these 23 similar, almost same Rashi font. This list is taken from your manual, the Lashon Torah manual, page 66. You've got the full listing there of all the two letter words in Bereshis. And you've got in this document, which comes with this video, the 20 words out of those 48 that are Rashi letters from the 23 they already know. Look at the word Har, Ma, Chain. Pe, Koyach, Ad, Hen, Yad, Pen, Ze, Ra, Gun, Min, Dag, Kol. Pay attention to how the font is almost exactly the same as regular, and therefore the children will find this very easy to read. This means that they are already reading Rashi words, literally. We're not yet in actual Rashi Perush on the page of Chumash or a Gemara, but we're scaffolding in incremental levels so that they will reach the point where they can read three, four, five, six letter words and it's Rashi font throughout. We're up to number 16 of 20, two letter words. Chai. I don't mean like chai, it means alive. Chai. Ki. Chen, Al, Sal. There you go. We're not doing Taich now. The kids have already done that many times. We're just recognizing how easy it is to read Rashi script. We're now introducing three letter words in lesson number three in Rashi font. How are we going to set them up so they will be successful in reading these three letter words? There's quite a few of them, I think about 50. And the answer is very simple. We're only selecting the 23 letters that are almost exactly the same in Rashi and in regular font in these three letter words, and there are 50 of them. So even though there are 175 three letter words in the Lashon Torah manual, we have found out of those 175, there are 50 that are the three Rashi letters that we've already learnt, and they are almost exactly the same as the regular. So let's look at them. Haya, Ruach, Tachas, Peri, Min, Nasain, Oif, Kanaf, Hine, 
Yerek, Matar, Afar, Nafach, Nata, Yadoya, Nahar, Pared, Lakayach, Maves, Neged, Nafail, Sagar, Pikeach, Ayin, Ale, Kail, Haloich, Lechem, Ur, Ata, Derech, Hara, Kanai, Yasif, Hara, Lama, Haraig, Ir, Oid, Sefer, Naar, Anon, Yayin, Goy, Gamal, Hake, Peger, Mel, Kali, Dagon, Para, Yareach. End of lesson three. So we've covered two letter words in lesson two, three letter words in lesson three. Now we're going to shoot for lesson four. You can see the lessons are very short. If they're taking any amount of time, it's because I'm giving explanation. I'm going to introduce the Zion. So Zion is one of the letters that's not exactly the same. It's still not the whole lot different. And let the children see. This is a regular Zion. This is the Rashi Zion. Can you see that the regular Zion and the Rashi Zion are not a whole lot different. They're not exactly the same either. Uh, you don't have to make a big deal out of this, but just let them recognize that the Rashi Zion has its tip at the top going in the opposite direction of the regular Zion. So this is a Rashi Zion. Um, Moshe, can you tell me what this is? Very good. Chaim, good, it's a Rashi Zion. Uh, Mordechai, good, this is a Zion in Rashi. Very good. Now, straight away, after we've learned that this is the Zion, leave it on the board so that children can see and give them the following words, either on a smart board or if you can put these in cards, put them on the board. And these are the words which now contain the Zion in it, which is a Rashi Zion, with another letter of Rashi, which they are already familiar with because it's almost exactly the same as the regular letter. Plus, the two letter words we're going to look at and three letter words are all words the children already know, which means the children will be able to figure out from the rest of the letters in that word, it will remind them that this is a Zion. You'll see in a few moments. Ask them to read the following words. Ze, Ez, Zera, Zohar, Zeya, Zachar. One is remember, one is male. So those are the new words that the children should be able to read because the Zion has now been introduced and these are words which they are already familiar with in regular Hebrew font. End of lesson number four. They can do plenty of Chazara with those words. And you have it in digital form. You can download it from our website and you can order it with this DVD. Lesson number five. Teach the next letter that is slightly different. We're going to go with the base. Here's a regular base. Here's a Rashi base. What's one way to help them pay attention to the difference? Well, the Etzim Surah is not a whole lot different, but it looks as though the Rashi base has been punched in the back with a bat. And it dented the base. So it used to be almost like a regular base, and it was punched in the back and dented right over here. So now the base in Rashi had bat bang in the back of the base. <laughs> How do you like that? Bat, bang, the back of the base. And now it dented it, and so now you've got the Rashi base. The moment they've learnt a Rashi base, obviously I think they're going to have an easy time with vase as well. So you've got regular vase, Rashi vase. Immediately give them words to read. Set them up for success. How? Give them words they already know in regular font, which contain letters of Rashi which are same or similar, and the new letter they've been introduced to, which is the base and the vase. So, in this lesson number five, you've got Rav, Ben, Lave, Bas, T, 
Toiv, Bain, Erev, Boiker, Tsava, Evan, Levad, Banai, Davak, Akev, Cherev, Teva, Bias, Avar, Daber, Eved, Davar, Chaver, Kever, Beged. If we have not created ourselves all these words in small card form, because you've got the digital format so you can do it yourselves, I would recommend you do it so that you've got now two sets. You've got two sets of two letter words, two sets of three letter words, and two sets of four letter words. The sets are one set of regular Hebrew, the other set is Rashi font Hebrew, which means that you'll have children doing matching games where they have to match the regular Beged with Rashi Isis Beged, regular word for Lechem, and Rashi Isis for Lechem. And this way, they will be constantly paying attention to same, similar, and whatever is different. Because out of the 32 total letters, 23 are almost exactly the same, and there's only 9 which are different. And it's not really less than 9, because if you count Shin and Sin as two letters, then it's really 9, but really it's 8. You've got 23 versus 8. It's so a very easy proportion for a child to realize, oh my gosh, I've got the vast majority, over two-thirds of the Isis, I already know. We're ready for lesson number six. You ask the children or the individual child, are you ready to read four-letter words of Rashi? And if the answer is yes, great. If not, you hold off till they tell you they're ready. I'm going to share with you 27 four-letter words of Rashi where the letters are similar and the ones that aren't, the child has already been introduced to. So you have not introduced any letters that the kid does not know. You've only introduced 23 that they are almost identical to the regular Hebrew font. And I think it's only three so far that we've introduced that are slightly different. You're setting the kid up for success. Okay, here goes. Hevdel. Behema. Nekeva, La'avaid, Soivev, Banais, Mabul, Beris, Mizbeach, Baracha, Laila, Rakia, Mikve, La'avaid, Mashke, Mipne, Roye, Mincha, Lifne, Mikne, Yachel, Yamin, Geizal, Eilam, Matana, Madua, Kavaid. You're now up to lesson seven. In lesson seven, we're going to introduce the Tzadi, regular Tzadi, Rashi Tzadi. Now, what would happen if I push down on the tip of the Rashi Tzadi, and it will contract slightly. Can you see it will become a similar shape to the regular Tzadi? That's just a way to help the children see that there's a similarity. I'm not looking for the big differences. I want them to get used to that this as a sight letter is Tzadi. So check Tzadi out, put it on the board so the children can see it in front of them. As we read the following words, you'll give them the following mostly three and sometimes four letter words that contain the letters of Rashi that they're familiar with and now the Tzadi. Tselem, Tsemach, Yatsar, Tsave, Tsela, Etsem, Tsayad, Tzadik, Mitzvah. And now you're ready for lesson number eight. Aleph, regular Aleph, Rashi Aleph. Hmm, don't look too similar, but let's ask ourselves, how many parts are there to the regular Aleph? One, two, three. How many parts to Rashi Aleph? One, two, three. So help the children see what's similar. That's always the focus you want them to pay attention to. Because you've introduced the Aleph, 
they are now going to be able to read 53 words. These are not new words. These are words they already know in regular font. The majority of the letters in each word they already know because the Rashi letters are similar. And the few that are not, they're going to get from context and eventually they will know it from so much familiarity, practicing it again and again. Watch this. Mare, as in appearance or mirror. That's where the word mirror comes from, appearance. Mare, meis, smile, malach, oichel, adama, teena, baroi, anoichi, atain, achim, ulai, ahava, amar, ur. Ra'ay, Karay, Echad, Yatsai, Ois, Male, Adam, Mu'aid, Tsva, Ele, Ayin, Evan, Matsai, Zais, Yare, Tsain, He, Aizen, Acher, Mea, Ani, Nasai, Atem, Be'er, Ayil, Elef, Ahoiv, Emes, Kise, El, Av, Loi, Af, Ba, Ach, Ach, El. Wow, we're getting really close to the end. Welcome to lesson number nine. We're going to introduce end of tzadi. Here's a regular tzadi, looks a little bit like a tree, kind of a trunk with a branch sticking out. Rashi tzadi is a straight line with two horns coming out of what looks like a bit of a head. It's not a whole lot different in a certain sense to the tzadi. You can see it's got two pieces up here and two pieces up here. So in that sense, you can show the children the similarity. But now you've introduced that this is the end of tzadi, you can immediately now go into the list of words which end with the end of tzadi in Rashi font. And there are only six of them. Based on the 303 shirashim, there's only six left that end with the end of tzadi. Ruts. Eights, Eretz, Sheretz, Kites, Chutz. There you go. Out of the 303 Shirashim, these are the only six which end with the end of Sadi. So it only turns up six times. But nevertheless, you want to drill the kids in these six words. If necessary, pull up on your screen or on your flip chart or on your board the six equivalent words in regular font so the children can see the comparison. Welcome to lesson number 10. End of Mem. Regular end of Mem. Rashi end of Mem. Hmm. Who can tell me what they notice about the Rashi end of Mem? Is it similar to any other Ois letter that you are familiar with? So the kids are going to say, yeah, it looks exactly like a Samach. Excellent. Rashi's end of Mem is the same as a regular Samach. You're hardly ever going to find the Samach at the end of a word, but end of Mem, you will. So when you see in Rashi, Shamayim, you'll see the end of Mem is this shape over here. So put this up on the board and now pull up on the board all the words which we're giving you that end with end of Mem. And it has the same shape as a regular Samach, but it's really end of Mem in Rashi. Mayim, that's a word they've seen hundreds of times. Mayim, Yaim, Adam, Tselem, Terem, Kedem, Pa'am, Etzem, Lechem, Kum, Hukam, Atem, Panim, Makim, Le'olam, Olam. Yam, aim, gum, hem, dumb. So there's 21 
words that end with end of mem. And in Rashi, they're getting used to the fact that these are words they already know. And the end of mem, even though it's circled more like a samach, it's nevertheless in Rashi script, end of mem. Is that clear? Then we can go to lesson number 11. We're going to introduce the shin and the sin. And then we're going to look at all the words where shin and sin appear, where all the other letters the children already know. And many times from context alone, they'll be able to figure out that that's a shin because they're pronouncing the word they already know. And the Hebrew letter for shin is not exactly the same. Here you've got a regular shin. Rashi shin. Well, if you turn it over, it looks a little bit more like a regular shin. But you see where the dot is? It's on the right side. One way to remember that is Shema. Which hand do you put to say Shema, Yisrael? Oh, you put your right hand. Oh, so it's on the right side and you'll cover your eyes with your right hand. If you think you've got the right answer to a question, you put your right hand up. Oh, so you give the right hand for the right answer. So you'll use your right hand for Shema, your right hand for the right answer. Yes, you got it right. Shin has the dot on the right side. So this is going to be a sight letter the child will have to memorize. This is a Shin. Turn it over, you can see it almost starts to look like a Shin. This is a Rashi Shin, regular Shin. Sin, regular Sin. And Rashi Sin, the dot is on the second side. Not the first side of the shin, which is your right side for shma, shin, shma. It's on the second side of the sin. So that's just a way to remember where the dagish, the, the dot is on the sin. So regular sin, rashi sin. Straight away, after putting these both on the board, both meaning the shin and the sin, rashi and the regular. Now, you'll pull out from, this is taken from the Lashon Terra manual. Uh, all the remaining letters, which are uh, shin and sin. In total, there are 22 with a shin, and there are 8 with a sin. Here we go. Reish, Chayshech, Asher, Shana, Nefesh, Shishi, Shabbat, for the Ashkenazim, Shabbos, Kaidesh, Shem, Sham, Shaymer, Nachash, Shamaya, Shalach, Sheva, Tesha, Chamesh, Shalash, Chaydesh, Isha, Sheker, Asher. There you go, twenty two words with Shin. Inside, hopefully with uh, practice, the children will really start to recognize all these osias. And now we're up to lesson 12, the last lesson. Sin, regular sin, Rashi sin. Put them on the board. Remember, the dagesh, the dot is on the second side of the sin. Second side of the sin. So now we're going to look at the only seven words left out of 303, which have a sin in them. And they are. Basar, Asai, Remes, Siach, Sade, Sim, Nasai. That concludes our 12 easy shmizi lessons in how to read Rashi. From here on, you can start putting words together. Look at sentences of Rashi in Chumash. Please don't use Rashi without the Kudas. Baruch Hashem, more and more editions are coming out now, which is just Rashi Menukud. Please don't use Rashi without Nikud, both in Chumash and in Gemara. It's just an unfair disadvantage to a child who's already struggling with a whole new font to then have to work on a font that has no Nikud as well. The Nikud is not a crutch. The original printing of the Gemara Bavli, Talmud Bavli, actually required in the contract that the Nikud should be included. Rabbi Chaim Isaac Rudzinski, of blessed memory, began an entire campaign 
1906, he published Masech de Gittin, Menukot. And that was supposed to be the first Masech of the entire Shas Bavli. The First World War broke out, 1914, the whole campaign ended. And of course, the only agenda was survival. But it's only very recently that Tuvia Shas came out with the entire Surah Sadaf Menukot, with Rashi Menukot, and Toysvus Menukot. Please use Rashi uh, Menukot, either from Tuvia Shas or now uh, the new Oiz Vahada Shas is coming out with that. Make life easier for the children, not harder. And their endearment to learning Rashi, Bezvar Hashem, will be a lifetime career. Instead of it being, oh, this is hard. This is difficult. I don't like this. I hate this. I'll never become an independent learner. I'll never be a Talmud. I'll give up. No point in trying. Every time I try, it's so hard. It's so difficult. Why should I get pain from trying? I'll give up. And therefore, the child will prefer fail than try, because he's tried so many times. So this is about making it easy, not in an artificial way. It's because it should be easy. This is a very simple method to set the child up for success, so that they have a lifetime career of enjoying reading, understanding Rashi. And in that zuchus, we should all be zeicher to march nachas from our children, and perhaps greatest of all, give nachas to the Rebbein Shalaylam. Amen.